Ed and I are very lucky today to be at Susan's Garden and everybody in the club will recognize her because she's one of those gals that grows flowers and wins all the prizes from the parlor show. Thanks so much for having us here, Susan. We're really looking forward to seeing the home of the famous oh. Cafe Olay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, thank you, and I, I'm so glad you could come. It is so disappointing this year that we haven't been able to have um, garden tours where people could um, could come around and yeah. visit. And um, flowers happen regardless, so it's really great that you were able to come and uh, see what is growing and some of the things that haven't as well this year. So, uh, welcome. Thank you, well. and I know, and I, it's nice to see that you have things blooming because I know in the last week or so we've had some wind and we've had some rain, so, you know. Yes, well, yeah. everything's on a cycle, and so like the roses are just coming into their third their third bloom yeah. and had you been here about 10 days ago there were some spectacular you know blooms there so yeah. you know that's uh, that's the life of a garden <laughs> what is this here i think this, this is, is a plant a, i was talking about a limelight um hydrangea <laughs> carol ann this is the plant i was talking about when we were at carol ann's house oh, she had yes. some um phlox that yep. I thought were this. Yes. Uh, and I know this is a very expensive plant they sell as a tree, right? And it's, uh, they it's, can be. Yeah, yes. they're amazing. Yep. I love hydrangeas. This is one of my favorites. Um, this one here um, um, grows very well. Uh, when it started out, it needed um, propping. Okay. Um, the uh, original branches weren't strong enough to hold the um, to hold the blooms they're because huge. they're huge and yeah. they can get bigger than this. Um, wow. This is only um, this plant is maybe only two or so years old. Um, they are very easy to propagate as oh. well. So once you have one, you can have as as many as you would uh, as you would like. Do you know you the like. secret about what soil produces the pink or the blue? These are always that. Those are always the, green? Yes. So there's three different types of hydrangeas, uh -huh. and um, you need to check online because how you trim them back each year makes a difference in terms of whether you will get blooms the next year. Okay. So we'll see some of those ones that the blue or the pink that you can change according to adding the acidity or What's whatever. An acidity thing? The, to the soil mm -hmm. um, and um, um, I had one that turned white so huh. go figure I'm not sure <laughs> just what happened with that but um, the um, you have to check on that because on some of those types of hydrangeas if you cut them back they only bloom on second year growth so oh. if you've cut that off then you're not going to get any I any wish I talked to you last week I just cut my only hydrangea I think I cut it too much oh oh yeah. well <laughs> well if you online or you I'll go on to mine they yeah. they tell you about the three different types and and how to and how to prune them <laughs> okay well there's new growth now and I'll take another look and do it yes yeah. there you go lovely well let's have a look up here sure. and see what you got growing sounds mm. good I have probably close to 30 dahlias um, on the property um, wow. this one is the the cafe um, Olay that um, is um, um, very famous for the wedding uh, wedding bouquets. That's oh, why okay. so many people um, grow them. There's two others that are um, that are very similar. This one behind, and a new one called Labyrinth that we'll see okay. up on the other side. Um, that when you take a look at. Um, uh, some of the books by Florette where she talks about uh, the dahlias um, they are huge blooms and they're they are just um, they are just beautiful so um, and it's funny because you know I look at that and I think you know there's so many vibrant colored dahlias that just sort of jump out at you but there's something about this subtle cafe au lait yeah it's stunning it is yeah yeah very just much very beautiful. much so and you need a little bit of of everything you know right. that it's um uh that's what for bouquets um you know you want um you want a variety of different things yeah absolutely yeah. So the other thing that um, that I've probably I, that I love to grow are um, are peonies, and um, I have about twenty five peonies oh now, yeah. and um, 
uh, I mean, we're obviously really, really late for, <laughs> for those. But um, that that has been fun, finding very unusual um, peonies with all sorts of different colors and different shaped heads. And um, they, uh, most of them need to be propped, as you see, mm-hmm. they're all, they're all tied. Yeah. Um, some of them get their, their heads, like you can see this one here, the head, this is uh, going, to, going to be a seed pod, but those uh-huh. get so long large that the plant can't hold hold them up and these here are um, again maybe about two or three years old this garden has only been in maybe three years up to the boxes oh yeah and how um, long does it take for for a new peony to actually bloom like does it take a while well um this here is a one-year-old, um, a one-year-old peony. Yeah. So when you buy them from places like Brex or Vessies, you get a very, very tiny tuber, and it usually will have three little, uh, um, little starter buds on that. Yeah. And um, that is um, when it came last year um it was too small to put in the garden so i put it in a pot and i put it in the in the greenhouse and um, if you buy them however at um locally and they're already coming yeah um, they might be two at least two years old okay. the first blooms you're not supposed to pick you're supposed oh. to just leave them when they die you just cut the head off and then all the uh, nutrients go back into into the plant oh, um, so um, that's the same with daffodils and tulips and all those things that you don't want the energy going into into that right and it, okay and it well and I'll, I'll leave my peony that's not bloomed yet I think this is its second year so maybe yep. next year it'll bloom and then I'll cut the bloom off when it's dead yes okay. and um, they like um, um, a, a lot of fertilizer so because they um, things like bone meal is okay. what they do <laughs> they do the, okay. the best with um, yeah. I buy the fish uh, bone meal from integrity huh? and um, early spring you go around and um, February or so, depending on the year when they start to come up, you give them a good good um, dousing of it. And then when they're finished, you can also give them um, a bit more and that okay. will give I'll you lots of blooms. Up. Yeah. yeah oh, good to year. know. Lovely. Yeah. Let's see, you've got some of Benita's big, oh, whatchamacallits yes, there. Yes, and they, um, this was one plant, and wow. they are now all over the, the garden. There's probably close to um, 10 or 12 babies that will come out of each of them. Oh, my gosh. Do you remember what that's called? Because it's not a chicken and hen. It's no, a giant something. Yeah, no, I don't remember <laughs> offhand, yeah. but it is a succulent. Yeah. And, um, and it gets those kind of... Pinky, they did, and I did, and they were beautiful. I oh, just cut them yeah. off. They had, um, they had lived their lived their life, and they yeah. were they were ready to go. So from here on mm-hmm. up um, is a shade um, is a shade garden, right? And um, one of the things that I certainly have um, I've certainly learned is that um, you need to grow um, plants appropriate to. Their in their environment. That if yeah. you want to put sunflowers here, you're not going to be too happy with, <laughs> yeah. with the results. And as a result, you can see um, um, how well how well things grow. You know, yeah. and in, interestingly enough, this particular rhodo was yeah. about um, eight feet down it was further down that way yeah yeah and uh, it was uh, it said it was um, sun and partial shade and um, that's what that would have been in my mind and mm-hmm. uh, that was too hot for it and wow. moving it that much just made such a difference that's in funny. terms of um, um, how vibrant it is and how many how many blossoms that it had so mm. Look at that blue hosta. That one's my favorite, and it's huge. Yes. Now, um, I'm just trying to think of the name is in there behind. Ooh, I remember this. Yes. It's an unusual one you bring into the parlor show that everyone goes, wow. Yeah. I know. This... Um, you know who? Um, um, I haven't brought those in. Oh, um, else? Yes, it is. Um, trying to think. Our ex-treasure. Um, 
or yeah she she oh. has brought them in okay yeah i know who you mean yeah, yeah. oh okay well it's it's a really interesting it, they are and uh, when we were in france um there are acres and acres of them that just go up uh, up the hillside by a beautiful really? church and uh they are they are just um they are just lovely. Um, these here, this is one of the largest um, hostas that you can purchase from um, the Bamboo Place over on West Saanich Road. And she has a lovely selection of, um, of hostas. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted something really big to, to take up space. And, um, and that has certainly, um, certainly done the trick. Yeah. What you're looking for, the different textures, different colors of green um, to, to cut for the shade garden, because not much that will flower. That, however, is a black um, hellebore, and that was spectacular. Wow. There must have been 20 blooms on it. So again, that, that uh, plant was over on the other side of the house, and you move it here, and it has, it has just been um, just taken fabulous. off here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so in order to kind of create um, um, depth, um, we put the um, whoops, put the boxes in mm -hmm. um, to to you know so that you can have um, taller stuff and yeah. um, and shorter stuff that are that are there. Are those coleuses? Yes. Yep. Very nice. Yeah. Your uh, bells. Yes. Coral, coral bells. bells. Coral yeah. Bells. Yeah. Very pretty. Yep. Now, are you a theater enthusiast by chance? No, I'm a mask enthusiast. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought there might be a story there. Yeah. <laughs> no, they were in the house for the longest time, and um, I, there, I love detail. That's just fun. Yeah, That's it fun. is. Yeah. And like so, that. you know, when you do it, you do you do the design in sort of 10-foot sections, and uh -huh. you just you put stuff together. And, and stuff has come and gone um, uh, out of there. Um, I, I've worked towards um, a four-season garden. So um, in the spring, um, there are um, there's a huge arium, huge ariums in these, and they virtually fill the box. And when they die off, then um, then other stuff starts to come but it's always a work in progress so I took out some of the ferns and they have moved up, up there the so uh, for the fern garden <laughs> yeah. so that's you know that uh, it's always got a it's always always Juggling. on the move yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well let's have a look at your Careful. ferns <laughs> okay yeah. so um I love love water and when we put this in we wanted it open because i like the way the light um the light comes through and um so anyhow my husband built this wall this was not oh, purchased really? it was actually cool. um actually built yeah. and um there is nothing nicer than coming out and reading a book and having the sound of um the sound of water um that is there and so this from pretty much from here up is is this year's garden so okay. this is um, very very new here it's about a year old and um, the goal here is to basically um, use a variety of colors and textures of ferns so um, this is the Japanese um, painted ferns um, and uh, these these two here are hostas and um, again um, what you're looking for is different color different textures um, I've also bought some deer ferns um, oh, yes. that are there and there's two back there because right. with the bank going down you need to have something to kind of hold everything hold together it. and yeah. to cover to cover that area um, and are those sword ferns they're the there, yeah just regular of. our regular um ferns this one here i have one of those and for some reason i want to call it a licorice fern but that makes no sense no at all. It, that one isn't it's um yeah. trying to think of um what it it'll what it is it'll yeah, come eventually pretty. but um again i didn't you don't want to get too um too far ahead of yourself because you never know exactly how big they're going to get uh -huh. so you know you want to leave things and um, give them a year or so and let them establish and then you've got a pretty good idea of um, 
how big things are because you right. don't want to overplant at this point because I have no place else to put them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I can see that. I'm looking up the hill and it's like, oh, <laughs> a jungle. Yeah. So, um, and this here is um, a well-established uh, um, garden <laughs> and it's got um, rhodos and um, hydrangeas, lilacs, um, um, lots of ferns. hostas and ferns and um, what I'm gradually doing is taking some of these ferns out and putting other other ones in mm -hmm. like these so it up. That's just an interesting yeah one. and there's yeah. another one over there and um, they are again you want the different kinds of greens and colors um, also there's about four or five um, hellebores in oh, there yeah. that are kind of lot that you can see parts of them, see them but in the spring because uh, hey, 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 everything's yeah. cut back and um, love that yes there's two of two of those yeah. so um um, it has seal. A, a bit of a Solomon seal. It has yeah. a bit of um, a four garden or a four season um, approach to it. So you have um, a couple of nice maples in here as well. Yes. Yeah. Quite big. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, this is probably over 30 years old. This wow. was one of the first gardens that was um, that was put in, mm -hmm. and I keep cutting back this. Um, Rhododendron? Rhoda, thank you. And you can see, like, this was done in the spring, as soon as it had finished. Like, you can already see the growth that's coming. Yeah. Um, what happens is that there's sprinkler systems there. If that gets too big, then we have no sprinkler right. yeah. uh, no s system going through there. Mm. So the greenhouse, um, this is our second summer of, of having the greenhouse. It's a beauty. Um, I um, basically wanted it because um, there's so many uh, plants that can't manage over, over the winter. Yeah. And um, one of my goals was to um, go more to into perennials so you're not buying annuals yes. all of the time. But but all of um, these kinds of ones here can't um, manage, so they have to be dug up, and you need a, a place for them. And my husband got tired of them being in the garage. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. Can't get the doors open on the cars <laughs> because there's so many uh, there's so many plants there. So um, I t um, once the tomatoes are finished, then we put in um, racks and and just stack stuff up. Um, we have a, a heater that uh -huh. um, is set at the temperature. If it goes down below that, it just comes on automatically, oh, so I don't have to monitor that That's nice. too much. Yeah. But the um, uh, these are all heirloom tomatoes that are in here. Um, we don't get enough sun um, for them to ripen outside. Like there might be a couple places where you could put in a plant, but mm -hmm. then it gets hit by the sprinklers, and they're not um, happy they're about not that. happy about yeah. that. Yeah. So. Um, um, we have been um, um, really happy with um, with those. They are just the best eating tomato um, out like there. <laughs> um, I grow um, cucumbers. cucumbers. This is the second. Um, I, I stagger them so yeah. the first sets are finished and um, put frames up. And uh, oh, you yes. can you can see here how they uh, how oh, they yeah. how they hang down mm -hmm. and. Um, and so that works. Um, that yeah. works very well. That's and great. Uh, again, for starting to propagate stuff again, and right. ready for the next plant sale. Yeah. And we're, yes, and we're ready That's to coming up. <laughs> well, be it'll be for the spring at this point right. in time. These here, um, uh, this garden has only been in for three years, really? and um, this is the third bloom. So as you can see, these were all cut back. Oh, maybe not quite two, not quite um, two weeks ago, and you can see how they just um, come. Mm -hmm. um, they just come back so um, so quickly, but um, they were um, they were pretty pretty spectacular. Um, so, um, but you can see the damage, the rain. Yeah, re but that the one rain. looks pretty fine. I got yeah, that one smell is that, one. that is new. Oh, yeah, moonstone. It's just moonstone. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. And then the, the climbing rose over there oh, is right. normally yeah, pretty pretty spectacular um, yeah. as as well. And it the first bloom on that you can't see anything other I than I can see a little bloom there. What color is that one? It is an orangey an orangey color. 
Okay, is that the one that changes color as time goes on? Um, you're thinking of Joseph's coat? Yes. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not, okay. No. Um, it's actually Joseph's robe. Robe, that's it. Yeah, we've yes. got that all mixed up, and we've sorted that thanks to Carol Ann. Oh, great. <laughs> because because uh, she has one, and so does Jane. Yes. And so does Anne. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. will I, because yes. we're going to propagate one from yeah. Anne's. Yeah. 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 So those, spectacular. Um, look, those work really, really well. Um, next year, um, I will be getting two more larger versions of that. Um, oh, these yeah. two roses here are not climbers, oh. but somebody forgot to tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> and they just get so um, large and unwieldy. Right. Um, I've been trying to cut them back to get a sturdier, um, a sturdier stem from them. Yeah. Um, but this is a new rose this year. This is called Polka, and uh, it has got the most spectacular blooms and um, and color um, on those. It just looks elegant coming out of that birdcage, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there are larger ones of that, and right. um, if you can kind of control them, and at least then um, you can tie tie pieces in, like it's right. easier just with yeah. a piece of wire or something just to uh, to do that. And this is where all your peonies live. This is where much, a good eh? number of them. So there's um, about seven or eight up in that back garden. Right. And then, um, oh, probably about uh, 15, 15 or so here and about another three up in that area there. And uh, some of these, the big pink ones, are well established. They're probably 30 years, oh 30 years old. Yeah. And you and they have very thick stems. Those things will they stand up um, uh, really well. And then these are all the new um, the new ones. There's lots of unusual um, usual ones there. I was just going to talk about the um, sweet peas. Sure. Yeah, I left them uh, just because. Um, uh, because they have been spectacular. It's unusual for them to still be around at this point in time in the year. They tend to be more of a, a cooler um, weather one, but with it, mm. um, if it being um, cool, yes, they have stayed. <laughs> so um, these, um, you'll notice that the, um, the blossoms are, are quite unusual, and these seeds are from Chiltern Seeds in England and from Florette, um, in um in the states and um they have just i mean they're coming to the end but they have been absolutely phenomenal there's all sorts of multi-colored and flecked ones that are in there and the scent has been absolutely heavenly um so these um will be left and you can see all the pods yeah. that are coming and um, I will pick all those when they when they turn brown and mm. um, and keep them and um, that will um, give me quite a bit of seed. Now um, what happened last year that was quite interesting is that although um, uh, there's only one um, there's only one package of about eight seeds of white in there. Last year when I grew them, most of them came out white. I remember that because you put a bouquet in for the scented bouquet and yep. they were mostly white. white. Yeah. So I'm going to try it again this year, right. and um, but I will buy a backup. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> of the color just to make sure. So it's but a cross pollinating thing going it on. Might, maybe the white it might or be. Something. Yeah. But um, yeah, a little hard to get in there. But the the dark ones were almost oh. black. They were wow. just absolutely yeah. spectacular. Um, these um, what's partially cut off here are those. Um, uh, tiger lilies that won um, uh, first oh, place. Right. So yeah. you can see here. I left. I left the one because the um, because the sweet peas had climbed up on it. But right. they were. Um, I virtually cut off three feet. That's oh, how high they wow. were, and they bloomed for about ten days. And the the blooms were over a foot in terms of like they just kept coming in layers. Wow. They were yeah. absolutely spectacular. And there's lots of other um, stargazers and other things in here, but they have, um, they have just finished. But I left that as um, 
a, a, a holding rack for, for them because yeah. the, the peony or the sweet peas just went up um, went up those so um, yeah. yeah and as I had mentioned here um, before these are the um, more vermilionaire for the um, for the hummingbirds and uh, they are very very busy in that area lovely is that a poppy this here is a Shirley Shirley poppy oh. and you'll notice that it's gray yeah that's weird it's isn't, kind of a gray purple yeah, that's unusual isn't that it's very unusual yeah and when you look at that under the macro lens it uh -huh. is absolutely spectacular huh. and um, so that was my first attempt at um, see the stick there doing that and Let's you see. can see here oh yeah the colors and look look at that like variegated just some variegated and just how dark yeah and the smell oh, is just man. If they is, make a perfume like that they, I buy it yeah they do <laughs> oh and now you can see the dahlias yeah now how do you say it dahlia ah Yes. I know a lot of people call them dahlias. 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 No, it's yes. Dahlia. Yeah. Oh, so wow. now this is like, you know, we were talking about the fact that um, you buy a, a, a small, like when you start out and you buy really small tubers mm -hmm. and some you struggle with, like, you know, that's here we are, that's been in forever and that's how big it's got. Huh. These two are small. That there yeah. is a brand new one wow as yeah. is that pink one, that one. up there <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is the labyrinth dahlia this new one that is yeah. coming here and it fades out um very similar to the uh, cafe au lait Ooh. and uh, they have ju they just came out yesterday and um, <laughs> so uh, yeah I know that's yeah. what I was thinking these guys have been have been so slow in Thank coming you. Yeah. And uh, they are, um, again, uh, the colors on the inside are absolutely uh, beautiful. And um, this one here, I just cut off two huge blooms. These will get about 8, 10 inches, this pink uh -huh. one as well. And uh, this orange one is um, called Rust Bucket. Uh -huh. And uh, it's a pom-pom. Right. And... Um, uh, it's um, again a very a very pretty one, and then there's three extremely dark ones: um, uh, Voodoo, um, and uh, another one called Black Beauty. Um, that uh, that it hasn't come out yet. Now you told us your secrets about how to grow peonies with fertilizers and such. What's your tricks with your dahlias? Well, they're very very picky um that i think the biggest um thing you need to know is that they don't like a fertilizer with nitrogen so you need to buy one from something like integrity that is a, a specialized dahlia so fertilizer yeah. and um, otherwise what you get is a tremendous amount of um, you you want bloom rather than um, greens. Um, greens and you want your tubers to grow um, as well mm -hmm. um, when you plant them you don't plant them that deep and you put a layer of um, manure down first and Does it then matter what kind? I use the um, the triple the the one that has um, the three like so um, steer and steer chicken and, chicken and something mushroom something, something like that I think any of them are fine okay. I put a layer of that in I put um, bone meal and then I put in the um, the dahlia fertilizer mm -hmm. um, and then you cover it a little bit more with manure so the the tuber doesn't sit in it and um, um, and then you just lightly cover it and um, what you can do is some of them will say you you don't totally cover it you just you start to fill the hole and then as you see that it's going to be okay you keep gradually um, you keep filling it um, you should um, stake them um, 
as you um, as you go, yeah. and um, and again pinching um, the center out. And you can see here on this oh. rust bucket one, you see how I've pinched the centers of those, and that's why oh, you're okay. getting so you'll get way. So that's more. why you have lots of things coming yes. out all the way up. Yes. Okay, I yeah. see. And yeah. so you pinch that first one um, mm -hmm. when it's um, small, like right. almost like that size there, um, and it makes a it makes a huge difference. I mean, not everybody, not everybody does that. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I've tried um, propagating leaves. Um, so um, what you would do is to cut, or what you do is you cut off um, one, well, this is a bit big, but you would cut that off with a, an exacto knife or um, so something. So that whole stem with the leaves right to the yep, main stem. Right you to the cut main, off. Main, main stem. Okay. You um, dip it in rooting hormone and you put it in a sand mixture. Sand. Okay. And um, you put it on. Um, I tried it last year and I had minimal success with it. So I went back um, to Joan, who sells the dahlias yes. down there. And and um, it was her brother who had told me um, about how to do this. I'd missed the part about uh, putting it on a um, heating pad. Oh. And it will grow tubers from oh, that. Really? So that's another another Amazing. way of, of doing that. So um, I thought I'd pick some that I would really like. Yeah. Um, I've been having trouble with the cafe au lait, um, maintaining those over, um, over the winter. And again, I think it's probably been fiddled with to such a point it's not a really strong strong plant and she said the same they haven't had any uh, they haven't had much luck in terms of uh, so you're going to try and propagate from leaves in that yes one? yeah, oh, yeah. Well, you have to let us know how that works yeah out. see how yeah. that uh see how that works so mm -hmm. um but i mean that's um you know you're always exploring um lots and lots of new dahlia um types that are that are coming out and um some old favorites and some some new yeah well they they are there's a reason why people love them so much Mm -hmm. Right? They just have such big, beautiful colors and different shapes. Yes, they do. I mean, that's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. And this pink one here is Lady Rose from um, um, Downton Abbey, and it is the most spectacular. Lady Rose? Yes. That's that young girl. Yes. Oh, it must be a new one then. Yes, it is. Ah. And it is absolutely spectacular. Downton Abbey fans will know what we're talking yes, about here. Yes, they yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and this one here is just coming into its third bloom. So oh, um, look at that. The, uh, I love how they change color, you know? Yep. They come out orange and turn pink. And yeah. yeah, beautiful. This looks like a lovely one too. Yes. I bet it smells good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is Francis um, Millard, Malou, Millard. And again, this has, um, that's a beautiful one oh, there. Oh, it is. Yeah. And smell that. I for, did. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you... my gosh. It <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, it just... is just stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And then these are the in inpatients that are doing well. <laughs> yeah, they sure are. <laughs> Gorgeous. Well, you have a spectacular garden, and now I know Thank where you. all your lovely things come from, and I'll understand why you have so many beautiful things Blanks. in the parlor show. Oh, and hopefully we'll be able to have some parlor shows next I'm, year. Yes. We'll cross our fingers. We don't know what's happening, and nope. we're doing our best. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. next year will be another year for, hopefully, getting back to uh, Some sense things. of normalcy. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe we'll be able to get together. I know the executive's working on it, but we we'll are. see. And um, there is, um, there, it is very complicated and there is, it um, is. It lots is of roadblocks and it's just yeah. not as simple. And um, yeah. we also, have, our first responsibility is mm -hmm. keeping people safe. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, that's where we are. Well, we have our plant sale on September the 19th, so watch for that. Come and buy all the plants. Yes. But, uh, at least that will work out because we've done that before, had the drive through, and, and we'll let everybody know the houses that are hosting that yes, soon. Yes, one down at Lindsay's is going to be one. Oh, Her good. and I will be there, one Lovely. at Benita's, and one at Joyce Rod's at the moment. Lovely. And yeah. um, those, so there may be more, but that's what we're going to start with. Good. So we'll and see we'll how much that. we have. We'll post that so anybody else that's not in the club who's interested can. 
can come and buy some lovely plants that smart people like yourself have propagated. Propagated. So. Great. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you. You have a spectacular garden, and it's Thanks. been great to see you. Well, I'm so glad that you could come, and I get to share it with somebody this yes. year. <laughs> and send, send the link to all your friends who can't oh, come yes, and see your garden, come. so yes. they'll get to see a virtual tour. Sounds good. Thank Thanks you again. so much. Thanks, Ed. <laughs>